Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Love Sockwell podcast. My name is Sarah, otherwise known as Love Sockwell on Ravelry and Instagram. I hope you're doing well and thank you for pressing the play button and spending some time with me to talk about knitting and crafting and sewing and um, all, the, all of those fun things. Today is September 19th and you guys, this is the second day in a row that I have actually felt cold, like chilly. And it's so wonderful because we just got through this kind of horrible swampy heat wave. So I am very happy to be feeling a little bit chilly. Like I almost, almost need to wear hand knit socks, but we're not quite there yet. Maybe next week. <laughs> um, I have so much knitting to share with you. I have been all over the place with my knitting, lots of new whips and not a whole lot of finished things, but I can't wait to show them all to you. And I have a bunch of um, uh, sock bags. I have uh, fin just today finished to list in my shop today, so I'll show, show them to you as well. I'm really excited about them. They're really pretty. I, I'm kind of proud of them and I hope you will like them too. Um, I'm trying to think where I should start because we've got socks, shawls, sweaters, hats, scrappy blankets, you name it. I, I am here for it and I hope you're here for it too. <laughs> so let's see. Let me show you some finished, finished items. I'll show you the first one which I'm so excited about because I have not finished a hat in a long time but I finished a hat you guys. I finished it um, maybe two or three weeks ago. This is the Barley Light Hat by Tim Can Knits. I did not even realize that Tim Can Knits had a Barley Light. I, I know the Barley Hat, the worsted weight version, but there is a light version that you can use um, sock yarn or fingering weight yarn for. So I used a lovely Lolo Did It Yeti Goes to the 100 Acre Woods colorway it's on her plush sock base, which is, I can never remember. I can never remember the composition of that. I believe it's merino, tensile, and nylon, but it is the most loveliest base. It's probably, it might be my favorite base. I think I've said this before. That and the low original, I just adore. Look at these lovely speckles. It's very Winnie the Pooh. I love it so much. I finished it. Actually, I cast this hat on and I think I finished it in like a day. Like I cast it on on a Friday and was finished with it by Saturday afternoon. But this I think is gonna be for Juliet. So yes, but I can wear it too. So maybe we'll just share both of it. So I'm really, really happy I got I got that finished. And when I, as soon as I was finished <laughs> finishing the hat, I went ahead and cast on a sock with the Yeti goes to the hundred acre woods. Not quite done with the cuff yet, but I love it. Oh, and that's the other thing I was going to say about the barley light hat. This is amazing. This hat, I am not mistaken because I weighed it when I was done. I think it only weighed like 30 grams, maybe 33 grams. Here's a mess you guys. So, um, there is plenty left over to knit a pair of socks. As long as I do like contrast heels and toes, plenty of yarn for a hat and a pair of socks with one skein of fingering weight yarn. That's bargain. That's a bargain. That's value right there. <laughs> I love when you can use use your yarn to um, like stretch it to get a, a lot of different things out of it. It's really fun. Today I am drinking in my Oregon mug that uh, lovely Miss Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast gave me when I went out to visit her. This is maple flavored coffee, which I had not heard of before, but you can get yourself some at Aldi, which is one of their seasonal coffees. <laughs> so it'll be gone next week, so you better go get it now. I don't know if it'll be gone next week, but my experience with Aldi is for their seasonal stuff, if you see something, grab it, because the next time you go in there, it won't be there. But it's quite good. I love maple flavored coffee. I might start just putting maple syrup in my coffee. I've never done that before, but I think I'm going to start because it sounds very autumnal and we should be doing that. So yes, I love the maple, maple coffee from Aldi. Okay, back to socks. 
my other finished pair of socks, and I think this is my only finished pair of socks since last time we spoke, was I finished my Jinx Yarns Naughty or Nice socks. So this is my, my Christmas socks that I have finished for the year. I cast them on last December and then finished them, well, a couple weeks ago. So lovely, lovely colorway. I love this colorway so much. Um, it's on her sparkle. I think she calls it glitz base. And then I did Fish Lips Kiss Heel and Hedgehog Fibers. Oh, what is this? I think it's Zephyr. I knit a pair of socks out of this a while back. And I thought it looked nice because it's like um, just a very, you know, it's like a white background with lots of little colorful speckles, which reminds me of Christmas tree lights. So I thought that was a good yarn to use for the heel. So yes, I have one pair of Christmas socks done for this year. Okay, I have lots and lots of finished single socks, like I do. <sighs> Where to even begin? Okay, now I had some of these I had finished last time we spoke, but I forgot to show them. So I apologize. So this is um, the first monster sock set from Lolo Did It called El Chupacabra. And it is the funnest colorway. I love it so much. I love the contrast color, which I think is like El Chivo or something like that. I love it, love it, love it. And um, I, the second monster sock set that Lauren came out with is uh, Bigfoot. So I do have the first one done of Bigfoot. This one will be for men. It's a man-sized sock. And then I think, I think the contrast color is called Let's Go Squatching or something like that. It's lovely. And this is all on, um, these two are on the low original sock base that Lauren has, which is so yummy and scrummy to knit with. It's Really great. I'm so interested to see how it wears because I haven't worn any of my original socks yet. I don't know if I have any for myself. I have Hippo for birthday that's in the original, but I have not worn them yet. So I'm so excited to see how they wash and wear. Or wear and wash. Okay. There's more. There's always more. Okay, in a fit of fancy, I, ca <laughs> I cast on this sock and finished it um but have not cast on none of these have well except for bigfoot none of them have seconds cast on but this is bull and fine yarn spinderella on her volca base which is her mcn and then the sparkle is also bull and vine violet starred galactica and i'm kind of calling this my halloween this is kind of my halloween sock because it's halloween colors i think it's a halloween colorway i think she usually only dyes it this time of year. So it's fun. It's like Halloween-y and autumnal. I need to get the second one going. Here is the, the yarn. It's beautiful. I love it. Okay, let's see. Did I show this one last time? I can't remember. This is Luke's Pancakes by Adelaide Cottage. It's a Gilmore Girls reference. Look at these strawberry pancakes. Isn't that beautiful old stitch marker? She so kindly gifted this to me for my birthday this year. So I have sock number one done. It totally inspired me to make strawberry pancakes after she gave it to me. Because I never had had strawberry pancakes. They're delicious and you should go make some. Okay. Ooh, this one I finished when we went out to um, our trip to California back in August. I cast this on the day we left. So this is um, Felici, and as you can see where I wove in my, um, and I don't like that. We have a cat back here. Now, if I ever introduced you to Mary Margaret, this is Mary Margaret, say hello. She's a tuxedo kitty. Oh, she's the sweetest cat we've ever had. She can be a tad um, needy and frustrating sometimes. She frequently wakes me up in the middle of the night just because she wants me to spend time with her. Like she wants me to pet her and snuggle with her. Like she's almost like a dog. It's kind of crazy. Right Mary Margaret? See she's happy right now because I'm giving her attention. She needs very 
attention seeking. <laughs> okay, see where, see where she wants to go. Okay, so Felici, um, this, what color is this? I've got the other ball right here. Is that upside down? Yeah. <gasps> Sonora Sunset. I think that's why I wanted to knit it because we were, we were going west. So I knit the whole um, sock while we were out in California and I did the vanilla bean. I think it's called the vanilla bean sock pattern where you, every time the color changes, you knit one, slip one all the way around. I think it has such a nice effect. And then fish lips kiss heel. I think I knit these top down. Maybe I, no, I think I knit these toe up. I can't tell because it was so long. <laughs> It was a whole month ago. Sorry, I just shook you. Um, but it's a, I just did a fish lips kiss heel, and I think I think I did do toe up. Yeah, I did. I can tell because of my increases on my toe. So yes, there is that one, and then I've got another Lolo did it sock, which I believe I have shown before. So this is one of her sock sets on the Little Original sock base called I Love Rock and Roll. Those colors are amazing and screamy. <laughs> it's so fun. And this past week, I finally got the second sock going. I was knitting on this sock last week. I had to take Marshall to the dentist to get one of his teeth, his baby teeth pulled. And so I was sitting in the corner, you know, while they were working on it <laughs> and knitting away. And the lady, the, um, the dental hygienist, the assistant to the dentist, like she saw I was knitting and she's like, what, what, what is that? What are you knitting? And, and I think I was at like here, this is toe, I'm knitting these toe up. So I think I was about like right here. And so I was, um, so I told her it's, it's a sock and, and I'm knitting it toe up. And, and she kind of looked at me like this, like with this really quizzical, like skeptical look on her face. And she asked me, have you done that before? As if I had no idea what I was doing and I thought that was so funny because I was like lady you don't know who you're dealing with right here I've done this like about a thousand times but I just thought it was so funny that she was so skeptical that like there's no way I could possibly know what I was doing <laughs> maybe because it, it must have looked funny to her like um hey Margaret just knocking things over um, it must have like looked funny to her, like, how could that possibly be a sock? Maybe because it was still so small, but I just thought it was funny. <laughs> she was questioning my ability to knit a sock. How dare she? <laughs> I thought it was funny. Okay, so I've got a couple more. I did cast on a quick little sock for Juliet out of beautiful Gnome Acres, one of my treasured skeins. Um, this is Ninja Cupcake, and um, I'm just knitting up a little, quick little pair of socks for Juliet. I think to get the second one going, but of course I have not. But isn't that fun? I love the, the yellow in there. <laughs> okay, so this um, sock I'm going to show you is a new to me indie dyer that I've, I've just discovered. Um, Pineapple Yarns, and it's Marina. This is her her logo. She has a podcast as well called Pineapple. I, I, I think it's called, I don't know if it's Pineapple Knits podcast or just Pineapple Yarn, but if you were to do a search um, on YouTube, you will find it. Um, and she also has um, a uh, yarn dyeing business and pineappleyarns.com. I'll try to put it in the down bar below, but I just kind of stumbled across her podcast, was watching it, and I took a look at her shop, and she just has the most vibrant, beautiful colors in her shop. And um, I picked up this one, and it's called Electric Beach. All of her color, not me, all of them, but quite a lot of them are um, kind of beach inspired. Um, I think they used to live in Hawaii, so um, there's a lot of like tropical and um, summery, beachy colorways, and they're just beautiful. So I, I picked up this and I also got the exact same color. It's called Electric Beach in her mohair base because I wanted to do the same thing like what I did with the Yeti. Um, I want to make a Farley light. <laughs> so I'm, I'm double stranding um, the fingering weight Electric Beach with 
the mohair electric beach and look how fussy that looks it's gonna be the warmest coziest hat and this one will be for me so yes I'm loving that I love how her yarn knits up it's just beautiful so I have one sock done and part of the hat and yeah and I've got plenty to do both so what I'm doing for the sock is um, for the, a contrast heel and toe. This is, um, oh, what is this yarn? This was so sweetly gifted to me by my friend Patty. It's um, Stitch Together Studio. Um, but it, the, I don't know what the colorway is because I think it was, it's one of her like irregular skeins um, that I think Patty picked up in her brick and mortar store, um, which I think is now closed. I think all she, her, she's all online. Now you can order um, all, I think, I think just like every one of her colors might be like a pre-order. So whatever you want, you can get it. You can just have to pre-order it. And she has amazing yarns, very speckly. So, but I don't remember if there even was a name on, a, on this, but I thought it went very nicely with um, Electric Beach. So I'm having fun and I definitely want to, to develop a little stash of pineapple yarn. So I encourage you to go look at her shop because I think you will find something that you like because she's amazing and her podcast is lovely as well. Pause for coffee. Okay, is that it for single socks? I have one more. I was, um overcome by a fit of Crazy Zauber Ball back in July, and I cast on two different Crazy Zauber Ball socks. I don't have the other one with me, <laughs> but this is the one that got the most love. So this is Domino's, and I'm, I'm knitting these for Ben. I've knit him uh, one other pair of Crazy Zauber Ball socks, and they just wear so well and wash really well. He, it's been, um, wearing them every time he goes up to work on his cabin that he's building. Um, they're just very hardy, strong wearing. <laughs> it's good commercial, good stock sock yarn. So, but I love the gradient. It's pretty awesome. And then I just did a contrast heel just to kind of not break up the, the flow of the gradient. This is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners. Boy, this is messy and windy. It's um, the red that came with, um, I got it when I knit the Christmas socks of West Yorkshire Spinners a couple years ago. I don't remember the name of it. This might be Cherry Drop. I think that's what it's called. I have tons of it. <clears throat> so I do have the second one going, which I'm very proud of myself for. And I am past the gusset decreases, so if I apply myself and be diligent. I could finish this in like a couple days, but as you know, I get easily distracted by other other pretty yarns. But they, they will get done very quickly. I just need to focus on it. And then he'll have another pair for uh, working on his cabin, which, which will be good. I love the white. <laughs> this is my favorite. I was so excited when I got to the white part. This is the ball. And you can get this anywhere. Um, Hotyarns.com has a bunch of crazy Zauber ball. There's so many fun colors. It's a fun yarn to always be knitting. Okay. I think that's it for um, single socks and such like. No, there's more. <laughs> there's always more. Okay. Let me see what I've got in here. Oh, okay. This last week, my knitting inspiration was all over the place last week, especially. I think I cast on like one, two, three, at least three different projects um, last week. So I was on Instagram like I am often, and I saw um, one of my favorite people in the world to follow on Instagram, um, Amy, who is Exterminate. She is always knitting scrappy projects, like scrappy socks, shawls whatever, um, blankets, 
Um, and I just got all inspired to, to cast on a scrappy sock again because I have not knit one in a while. So I immediately cast this on in all different <laughs> leftover sock yarn. Some of these are minis that were given to me um, and some are just from leftover leftovers from past projects. So I'm almost ready to throw in a heel. I'll probably do a fish lips kiss heel here in just a, a little bit. So the, th the fun thing about scrappy socks is that they kind of knit themselves. Like it, before you know it, you've got a stripe knit and you're so excited to get another one going. So it's very potato chippy. I'm doing 10 rows of each color and then, and then I change colors. So it goes really fast. And then you, it's easy to keep track of how much you're knitting because every stripe is 10 rows. So yes. Currently, I'm putting in a stripe of orange. It's very fall-like. And this is Hedgehog Fibers Copper Penny. So yes. I also, um, I was just in a scrappy mood. <laughs> so I was watching um, the Grocery Girls podcast and they were talking about a, a sweater pattern that, um, Oh, I don't remember. I'm terrible, you guys. It's it's this better. Um, by Davixta on Instagram. I'm trying to see what her first name is. I apologize that I should know things like this. But it's a scrappy pullover. And it's called the Potluck Pullover. So I was like, I love this concept. So what did I do? I cast one on like I do. <laughs> we'll see how far I get with it. Um, it's just a simple top-down raglan sweater um, with, I, I guess, short sleeves. I'm thinking of just doing cap sleeves on mine. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I'm changing colors about every every six rows or so. It's it's totally random. You can do whatever you want. There's not really rules. Um, and I'm knitting this on a US four. Although I think the pattern calls for a five. Yeah, but I'm, I'm using a four because I like the gauge a little bit better with fours. Um, so it's another great way to use up um, your fingering weight scraps, which is great. And um, I, <laughs> I didn't do so good with this, but I tried to throw in some short rows across the back. Um, it's not written in the pattern to do that, but I just threw it in and I can totally see like holes where I did my short rows and I didn't I don't think I picked up my wraps right. But you know, whatever. It's fine. I'm not gonna rip it back or redo it. But anyway, is that a fun pattern? Good job, Devixta. And I apologize, I don't know your first name. I feel terrible. I should have looked that up before. Um, but I, I follow her on Instagram. <laughs> She's my friend on Instagram. Um, so yeah, I, I've been having a lot of fun with that. The um, color I'm currently knitting on it is, I don't even know if you can still get this yarn, but it's Wisdom Yarns Angora Lace. It's so soft. Like they say it's lace, but it's totally fingering. It's 462 yards. And it's self-striping, which is amazing. It's got Angora. It's 50% um, merino, 20% angora, 30% nylon. So yes. Okay, and then my bag here with tons of <laughs> future yarns to put in this project. It'll take me forever, just like everything else. Okay, so my other project that I was working on last week that I was kind, actually not just last week, like for the last two or three weeks, that I have been just really, really enjoying is um, a shawl by Stephen West called the Smocket Shawl. It's so fun and so squishy. <clears throat> I cannot remember the last time I've enjoyed knitting a shawl this much. So it's a three color shawl um, with kind of like these welds. I, I don't know what you call that. It's kind of like, what is that? Like reverse stockinette? I don't know. But it's texture, it's texture and squishy. And then there's like a ribbing border along the edge. It's, it's a boomerang shaped. Um, like I you start here, 
with color A, and this is Hedgehog Fibers Ramble. And then you start fading in uh, color B, which is, I chose, also Hedgehog. It was a potluck that I've had in my stash for a while. And then you switch to all just color B, and now I'm fading in color C. And actually, I just finished fading in color C, and this is um, also Hedgehog Fibers, but I've been blanking on the name. It's right here. <laughs> um, ah, Anemone. Isn't that fun? It's so juicy. <laughs> and I got this from uh, Warm and Fluffy, Warm and Fuzzy, something like that. It's in Cary, North Carolina. You guys, if you want Hedgehog, it's one of the best prices I've seen, and they ship for free. So I believe it is warm, warmandfuzzy.com. I think that's the website. But if you if you find the online shop, if it says they're from Cary, North Carolina, you found the right place. But I just love this shawl and um so what will happen next is I'll start decreasing so you know you start skinny and increase increase and then I'm gonna start decreasing to create the other side of the shawl and then you, you pick up a um, border I'm trying to see if I have I don't have the I don't have the pattern here although when I printed out the pattern I don't I, I try to print out so that I'm not printing out the big pictures because it uses up so much ink. So I don't have any, I don't have a picture to show you, but um, if you go to Ravelry, <laughs> type in the Smocket Shawl by Stephen West, you will see all the amazing uh, project pages of everyone who's knitting it. Um, but I'm so excited to get this done. Um, I've got a ways to go because I have to do all my decreases for the other end of the shawl and then I think the, the border is going to take a bit of time because it'll be like, you know, a gajillion stitches at that point. But I, I think I will enjoy it because you do this interesting um, smocket stitch that kind of brings it all together. Um, Kristen of Volenvine finished hers recently and that's what inspired me to start this because I saw hers and I thought that is just so beautiful. Um, so yeah, coffee time. Okay, I have a few more socks, I believe, to show you. <clears throat> and then I'll show you my Harry Potter blanket. Um, okay, oh, here, let me talk about this for just a second, because I have a giveaway that I am going to do on Instagram. Um, Sweet Lauren of Lolo Did It, who is amazing, came up with this beautiful colorway called... Hold on, let me, let me get this right. <laughs> it's... um. An acronym, but I want to make sure I say it right. K F A T B F. Knitting friends are the best friends. And she came up with the most beautiful colorway. It's like autumnal, like fields of wheat with purple speckles. It's just beautiful. She sent this to me as a gift. Thank you, Lauren. I love it and I'm enjoying knitting this immensely and um, I have a giveaway for you guys so she sent one for me and one for you guys you oh, guys isn't that beautiful and it comes with a um, contrast color in summer nights so you can do contrast heels and toes for your socks if you want you guys look at that it's so beautiful and also in here is uh, one of her uh, measuring tapes and a cute little um, Lolo, well, what is this called? Lolo Love. It's like the balm for your hand. And it's called Hookah Girl. I opened it up and smelled it. It smells amazing. I love it. And I think there's some stitch markers in here too. Yeah, right there. I think they're the, um, like this Edison bulb style uh, stitch markers. So I will be doing this giveaway on Instagram. So keep an eye on that. I'm Love Sockwell on Instagram. So um, if you want to Come follow me there. You keep an eye out. Is <laughs> this will be happening probably in the next week or so? Um, I'll post a picture and um, have some kind of prompt, and then um, pick a winner and and send this off. And oh, I'm so happy one of you gets to, to knit with this. It's really beautiful. And she's going to be releasing this in her shop September 25th, I believe. 
And I, you guys, I have been obsessed with knitting this. I just have been enjoying it so much. Um, I cast on a toe up sock and decided to do a three by one ribbing. And I'm almost ready to bind off um, sock number one. And okay, so this is a toe up sock as you can see, but look at this. It's got a gusset and a slip stitch heel. So it looks like a proper sock. It's like a traditional sock. And um, this is a pattern that I have, have done before, but I, I kind of wanted to perfect it and figure out my formula that, for, that fits my foot um, for me. So this is um, a sock pattern. I think it's called Toe Ups for All by Sivia Harding. I think that's correct. <laughs> so, so, you know, you knit, 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 and then you start doing your increases on the, the sole stitches. And then it's like a wrap and turn heel turn. And then you to keep decrease, you keep decreasing, you know, creating the slip stitch heel. And, um, I, I don't think I've found my exact numbers yet. Um, as far as like this sock is actually a little bit too snug on me. Um, so this is a 64 stitch sock, but I did the gusset increase in heel turn for the 56 stitch sock, thinking that it would fit my foot better because I have knit this pattern before doing the, um, the heel turn for the 64 stitch sock, but it was too roomy. So I thought I need to just do a smaller gusset in heel turn for one of the smaller socks, but I think it was too small. <laughs> so I think from my next toe up sock, I'm going to try, I'm going to do a 64 stitch sock, but do the gusset increase in heel turn for the 60 stitch sock and see if that is my perfect fit. I don't know, but I love this pattern because it's a traditional sock. And I love that when you knit toe up, you know, you don't get those funny ladders, um, you know, like with the top down sock, when you're doing the SSK knit two together decrease, you can often get um, ladders. I'm trying to find, like, I don't know which one would. Let me find an example. I've discussed this before. Um, okay, so this is a top down sock with heel flap and gusset. And I'm trying to see. Maybe I've gotten better and I can't show this, but it bothers me that you kind of get these ladders on the SSK side. And the same thing happens with the toe. This one's not so bad, but it's like, I just always can just see that line of ladders and it really bothers me. <sighs> it's not that big of a deal. No one would notice it but me probably because this is like the minutia of sock knitting. But I really like everything to look as neat and tidy as possible with my knitting. So if I could perfect this <laughs> toe up traditional sock pattern to my liking, then I've got a new go-to. And you guys, I think I might be a toe up convert, like for real. I will still knit top down because I have so many socks that need to be, so many second socks that need to be cast on um, that are knit top down. But I'm really enjoying knitting uh, toe up socks right now. It's just really fun. So, so yeah, so hopefully this week I can get this one finished and get the second one going because I really want this pair to be finished. Oh, I need to be principled. Okay. Oh, and here is the, um, summer nights. Isn't that the most beautiful mauvey purple? So pretty. So yes, it was so funny when I got this in the mail, I saw the colorway and um, Lauren had put a note in the package, but it was still in the package. So I hadn't read it yet. So I was looking at the letters and thinking, what in the world does that mean? I don't, I don't know what this means. <laughs> and so I Googled it thinking it's probably some, you know, pop culture reference or something that I living under the rock that I do. I have no idea. Um, but then, <laughs> and I couldn't find anything. I Googled it, nothing. <laughs> Just like weird stuff came up. And so then I found the note in the package and she explained it's knitting friends are the best friends. I was like, okay, now this makes sense. Oh, and she also so kindly included this uh, pin, which has the hashtag, hashtag KFATVF, and then Lolo did it on the bottom. So, so if you're taking photos of yourself with your knitting friends, use this hashtag so that 
that we can all see it. <laughs> so it's true, knitting friends are the best friends. Oh look, I found another sock. Here's my second pineapple sock. Electric Beach. So see, I am disciplined and principled. I do get second socks cast on eventually. <laughs> Okay, now I want to show you my Harry Potter blanket. So, um, Adelaide Cottage, uh, Shauna of Adelaide Cottage and Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast are co-hosting a year-long um, Harry Potter blanket knit-along. Um, and it can be knitting or crochet. Um, so I am doing the uh, mitered squares and I've got more squares finished. So um, just yesterday I put on this square and this is the Chamber of Secrets which is part of the mini skein um, set that I got from Shauna which are all her Harry Potter colors and then I finished this one and this is Jinx Yarns house cup so it's all the house colors which I will show you that yarn I've got that oh here it is so I put a square on my blanket first and then um, cast on a toe up sock and there's happy birthday Harry <laughs> so I have a bit of, of a dilemma with this one because I mean as you can see I'm knitting it toe up but the stripes are quite thin I mean or uh, skinny stripes and if I do this pattern with in a gusset increase I'm worried that all of the stripes are gonna get even skinnier so now I don't know what better, I don't know what better to do. So I might just do fish lips kiss for this for this sock. I haven't decided yet. We'll see. It's not that big of a deal, but I think but I make it a big deal. Um, so anyway, I love how the the square knit up. So I have another Harry Potter colorway that I might put in next. Um, I caught a very quick little uh, mustache update. She has a Harry Potter colorway and it's called Hogwarts. This is mustache yarns. Um, Hogwarts. So it's also all the, the house colors. And of course you get two perfect 50 gram balls so that you can have perfectly matching socks. So I'll probably knit from the outside and throw in a square on my blanket and then I can, um, I'll pull from the middle to start socks. <laughs> I don't know if I will do it this week, but but it's all ready to go for when the the urge strikes. So yeah, that is I think I think that might be just about all my my knitting that I have to share today. I would love if you would like to see to show you um the socks I have um socks <laughs> sock bags I have um ready to be listed in my shop today. Probably while this is uploading, I will be getting them listed in the shop. I'll put a link um, to my Etsy shop in the, the down bar if you are interested to go and see them. So um, there's, I've got three different fabric styles and there's four, of um, at least four of each one. So this one is Lemon Tree by Tilda. Look at these sweet little birds and the little pink lemons. And then you guys, look at the fabric on the inside. It's like lemon trees and it's like twall kind of. There's like little people reading and little woodland creatures and people, kids dancing and little chairs, little bunny rabbits. It's, it's very interesting. I love this fabric and it's a new to me fabric. Um, the Tilda collection. I'm not sure who that, or it, it's the Lemon Tree by Tilda. I think that's, I think that's how you say it. So there are four of these. I really like them. They're very pretty. Then, um, these are Peter Pan inspired, um, which is really fun. So it's a Peter Pan collection, and it, the illustrator or the designer is Sarah Jane, who is one of my favorite designers. And this one is all the girls from Peter Pan. So you've got Wendy and I think that's Tiger Lily. And then you've got um, the mermaids. 
And I just love this mauve color. And the inside is Tinkerbell. Isn't that sweet? And the, um, the, the, there's like little stars that are kind of metallic. I really enjoyed sewing these up. So there's four of these. I think the name of this fabric is Girls Are Way Too Clever or something like that. <laughs> so I love, I love Sarah, Sarah Jane. She's a very gifted illustrator. And then for all you Star Wars lovers, um, I've got lots more of the um, Darth Vader skull candy in the coral color. And the lining is um, lightsabers, light and dark. And there's actually five of these. And then I've got one more autumnal one from uh, my last batch, which is that pretty teal calico and then like the pumpkin-y um, autumnal words. So yes. So these are all ready to go. I'm just going to get busy getting them listed in my shop while, um, while this podcast uploads. So I think that's everything I have to share with you. Um, Rhinebeck is coming up. I'm not ready. I don't have any sweaters done. I don't think I'm going to have a Rhinebeck sweater this year. I just keep having this feeling that it's going to be really hot there. I don't know why. It might not be. It might be chilly. And I'll wish I had a sweater. But I don't think I'm going to get one done. I'll be doing good if I can get that smock at shawl done. I'd be really happy if I could get that done. And I'll, I'll bring a stack of freshly unwashed, unworn <laughs> hand knit socks with me. And that'll be my, my statement piece. <laughs> um, but I'm so excited to go and, and meet all the people that I'm going to have the privilege to, to stay with. Um, there's, I think there's about eight of us that are um, renting an Airbnb house together. So it'll be really fun to, to meet all of them. I've never met any of them in real life. So this will be exciting. Um, what else? What else? Um, the school year is going well, I think. I haven't gotten any calls from the principal yet, so I think we're doing good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's starting. The weather's starting to get crisper and cooler. We keep having thunderstorms in the middle of the night, like really loud cracks of lightning and thunder that kind of are. It's it's kind of disturbing actually. We had hail the other night, which was exciting because we never have hail. Well shouldn't say never but rarely does that happen but it's so loud it wakes us out of the dead sleep um okay I'm completely rambling and I apologize so thank you for sticking around and <laughs> watching me go on and on about all my crazy projects you are the best and um I will see you on Instagram um take care and have a wonderful rest of your day bye